Two really common repairs on aluminum are filling a hole and then a doubler patch, sometimes called a scab patch. Let's do it. I'm going to cut the doublers out of a scrap piece of the same tubing that I'm going to patch. I'm going to cut two of them. And the reason for the beads on here is because I used this in a previous video where I compared different frequencies. So I'm going to show you a few little clips of that in case you want to go check that video out. I started off setting the machine to 90 amps and 50 hertz. I set it up on a turntable so that travel speed would be identical. And I kept the arc length the same. And at 50 hertz here, at 90 amps on 070 material, penetration was pretty good and smooth and consistent. I turned it up to 250 hertz, no penetration, same amperage, everything. So there's a big difference in, in AC frequency. It just depends on the application. Now, there are cutting wheels specifically designed for cutting and grinding aluminum that won't load up as bad as a regular one, but here I'm just using some beeswax on this slitting wheel here, and it works pretty good. I'm going to have to clean those edges and get that beeswax off of there before I weld this thing, but no problem. Also, throwing a little beeswax on a flap disc really helps it cut without loading up. So once I'm deburred and completely uh, cleaned up here, I will scrape the edges with just a regular deburr tool. And I'm being pretty thorough, thorough on this and I'm not only deburring it, but I'm getting a, a nice clean layer of aluminum. And then I'll give it a wipe down with some acetone and get it completely cleaned off. I'll do the same thing on the piece that I'm going to be welding to. Give it a good wipe down. Cleaner the better. Clamp it down to the table using a strong hand locking C-clamp here. And first thing I'm going to do is weld this hole. I just, I just drilled a hole in this just to simulate what you might have to do if you have to drill out a crack or something. I like to use a, a tapered electrode for arc starts. I get a nice crisp arc start if I want to start off low. Like if this was really thin, say something around 020, I would definitely want to have a, t a nice tapered point so that I get a nice arc start. And I'm just letting that cleaning action do its thing for a minute before I start adding filler metal. Sometimes you welding on a dirty old pontoon or something like that, it's good to just let that cleaning action do its thing and bake out some crud before you start puddling. Now I'm giving it a little more, more amperage and kind of washing everything together and then swirling to, to prevent leaving a crater crack or dot or anything. And then I'll add a little beeswax to the flap disc again and grind it down flush, just leaving just a little bit. Now I'm ready to put the patch on and we'll clamp it down and get four tacks on it. You might have to get more than four tacks on something like this, but it's a relatively small tack. I just added a, some strong hand clamps to my store at weldmonger.com if you're interested in uh, checking some of those out. I'm using two different kinds here, the round tip and the uh, swivel flat foot. And you can see I'm using every bit of the throat just to, to reach the clamps. Giving a good wipe down on the filler rods, that's always a good idea. This machine has little blue spots in the what they call the sweet spot areas, the recommended sweet spot areas, and they work pretty darn good. They get you in the ballpark, and so I'm pretty much just using those little recommended settings as far as AC frequency and AC cleaning, or AC balance, I should say. Still using a tapered tip to get my tacks so that I get a nice crisp arc start. This is a FlexLock 360 torch from CK Worldwide. You can see you can get pretty much any torch angle you want to get, which really comes in handy when you're welding on something that you can't spin around and you have to, you know, weld it in place. On this particular job, I could have spun it around no problem, but I have recently upgraded to this TIG torch. I'm just showing you how, how useful it is in getting whatever favorable angle you want to get. So I'm getting four quick tacks. I'm trying to leave my tacks a little bit smaller than the final weld will be so that I can weld over them without you being able to tell where they are too much. Usually a good practice. You can't always do it because aluminum tacks are pretty weak sometimes. You got to add a little filler metal in there to keep them from cracking usually. For this video, I'm using 332nd diameter 4043 filler metal. Now that would, that would be determined by the base metal, and oftentimes if this were, let's say if this were a pontoon, it, it might very well be a 5000 series aluminum, so you'd probably want to weld it with 5356 or another 5000 series rod. 
I'll state the obvious here. If you've ever welded aluminum like this, you know that when you prop your hand pretty close to the weld, it takes it about 3.5 seconds to start really roasting your hand. So that's where a TIG finger really comes in handy here. I'm just kind of sliding it along gradually. It's made from a really smooth material that will let you glide along like this. And it's just nice to have a prop in your pocket for those times when the, the part is just hot. Let's me just glide along and my fingers don't get roasting and I can concentrate on the weld instead of concentrate on how my fingers are hurting or my knuckles are roasting. And I think we have all been guilty of hanging in there a little bit too long, wanting to finish that weld, and then getting some really bad blisters. I know I have. Here I'm look, kind of looking through this nice clear cup. One of the benefits of a clear cup is being able to look through it. Another is it just kind of lights things up for you. It's kind of like a light bulb or a flood, a flood light kind of lighting the way for you. And if your eyes are like mine and not what they used to be, it can be a really big help. When you go back to welding with a regular pink cup or something, it's kind of like, ooh, who dimmed the lights here? It, you know, I'm in my 60s now. I need every, every bit of help I can get, and this is a big help. I'm using about 20 CFH of straight argon here with this number 8 cup. And again, a 332-4043 filler, and I'm using 332 2% lanthanated electrode. That's what I use on everything, AC or DC. You can see here I'm looking through the back of the cup, or the camera is anyway, but what I like about this shot is it's, you can see that I'm adding filler about every eighth of an inch and moving forward about every eighth of an inch. That puts you in a pretty good rhythm and a pretty good travel speed. Of course, you know, if you were doing a hundred of these, your travel speed would definitely get better and better and faster and faster, but it's not something to worry about. You want to more worry about blending all your tie-ins together and making sure it doesn't leak. This is sped up a little bit. We're almost done here. I'm trying to get to the end. All the arc shots are going to look the same from here on out, but I did want to show you this one. This is a tie-in here. You want to overlap, slow down a little bit because it's more mass there. It takes a little bit more heat. Overlap, and then quit adding filler and move the arc around as you slowly taper the amperage. And that usually helps prevent from leaving a little tiny little crater crack. If you look at all your stops on aluminum with a magnifier, about 10x, you'll be surprised. I don't always use clear cups, like I said before, but they sure can help you see better. See where you're going, and if you have to weld into a corner, you can look through the cup sometimes. This is a Furic number 8 Pro. You can find it at weldmonger.com, along with the other products that I use in this video, my TIG finger, and Tick Finger XL, completely made in USA by friends and family. Thanks for watching.